Before I get into today's episode about Jacoby Brissett, just figured I'd let you guys know that today's episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. And before I actually get into the actual ad, I know a lot of you guys are going to skip this ad anyways, so I'm just going to put the time code in the video letting you guys know if you want to just skip ahead. I know a lot of you guys have already, you're already aware of what SeatGeek is, you're already aware you can save $20 on your first purchase using the promo code JKS. You get it. So there's no shame in skipping the ad. But if you are interested in it, SeatGeek, it's $20 off your first purchase. You can get tickets to sporting events, to comedy events, to concerts, anything of that nature. You can save $20 on your first purchase just by using the promo code JKS. And I have the link in the description to SeatGeek. There's also an app you can get on your phone, so it's super convenient. If that's something you're interested in, again, save $20, use the promo code JKS. And if it's not something you're interested in, then no worries. I hope you guys enjoy this video. So through three weeks of Jacoby Brissett being the full-time starter, so far, it's going pretty well, actually. He's playing pretty well. I mean, the yards per attempt isn't actually anything that's going to make you go crazy over. Seven yards per attempt, that's kind of on the low end. But at the same time, that's just part of the Colts system. I mean, even Andrew Luck had a low yards per attempt. He currently has seven touchdowns to one interception, and there's plenty of other statistics I could talk about, but let's be honest, the best way to evaluate a player is by watching their tape, so let's just get into Brissett's tape from his last game against Atlanta. Like on this play, it's going to be a cover one linebacker blitz, and they have a receiver simply running a curl route, which actually is a pretty good way to beat man coverage. As long as he can win his own one-on-one -on -one matchup, this could be a throw Brissett can look for, and also keep in mind, this is a blitz, this is a five-man rush, so Brissett will not have the time he typically does to look around and try to find somebody who's open. So after the ball is snapped, one thing you'll notice is that, I mean, the guy he wants to throw to is just wide open. I mean, he's five yards open at this point. This is too easy for Brissett. But also, if you look at Brissett, He's not hesitating here. If you watched my Mason Rudolph video I made just earlier today, I talked about how he a couple times just hesitated before making a throw, but that's not what Brissett is doing. There's no hesitation. He's making his throw exactly when he has to. It's perfect timing, and then his receiver gets actually out of a tackle and then gains even more yards. So that's just why you want to get the ball out quickly, especially on a blitz. And that's far from an isolated incident. This guy does that all the time, like on this play, again. Cover 3 zone this time, but similar thing in terms of he has a guy who's just going to run a quick route right over there, get into a gap in coverage, gain some positive yards, you can't go broke making a profit. This is the Colt system to a T, just gain some yards. You don't have to be making these deep throws down the field, maybe every now and then take a chance, but for the most part, just move the ball down the field. They essentially have the mindset of, on first and second down, the goal is to create an easier third down. And then on third down, the goal is just to get to first down. And then once you get to the next first down, well then you do it all over again. That's kind of what the Colts do. That's a very oversimplified version, but that is what they kind of do. Like a similar thing will happen with this play. It's going to be a cover three zone, and the Colts have a receiver running just right over there. And after the ball is snapped, you will notice that, once again, he is open very quickly. However, he's not way that far down the field. So a lot of guys might look around, see if they can get someone else who's open further down the field. Not for set, he's going to take what the defense gives him. He hits his man very quickly, and then you're able to fall forward and still pick up the first down. Because the reality is, if you have a guy who has the ball five yards down the field, there is a real chance he's able to gain five more yards and you get the first down. There's kind of this idea that being a guy who checks down a lot is a bad thing. Well, no, it's not. It's actually a very good thing in a lot of situations. It can allow you to move the ball down the field and get some first downs, all while not having to take two risky plays. I mean, that's how Alex Smith was so successful for so long and how his teams were always doing so well, even though he maybe necessarily wouldn't get some major passing yards. It's the same thing with Brissett. Brissett is never going to throw for 5,000 yards in a season, but he doesn't have to. He can still play for a winning football team, which is what you need out of your quarterback, a guy who will help you win football games. There was also this one where what's going to happen is it's going to be a cover two zone here, and those will be the routes that the Colts receivers will be running. So, you know, maybe something could get open, especially on the top half of the screen. That's maybe where Brissett will look to throw to first. There's certain ways this play could work on paper, but once the ball is snapped, it's not going to work out too perfectly. For one thing, there's pressure on the edges here, so now Brissett has to worry about that. He is going to have to step up into the pocket. And also, as of right now, nobody is really open right now. Maybe Brissett could try to force something, but you don't really want to force something in this type of situation. I mean, you're so close to the end zone, you're in field goal range, so you don't really want to force anything here. So for Brissett, he just has to try to find a way to gain some positive yards. And so what's one great way to do that? How about check down to your halfback right over there? That's what Brissett is going to do. He steps up in the pocket, hits his halfback, who then makes a move and actually gains a lot of yards on that play. So... 
Again, a lot of people might just look at that play and say, oh, well, you know, Brissett kind of got bailed out by a good play. He didn't really do too much on that one. I mean, sure, give him some credit for getting the ball off, but other than that, that wasn't really too great. But to me, I disagree. I think that's the value of being a guy who checks down a good amount. You pay your skill players for a reason. They can do things in open space. So if you check down enough, guys will break tackles and guys will find ways to gain more yards after they catch the ball. The reality is, football is a game of getting the ball down the field. I don't care if you gain 20 yards on a fantastic throw, or if it was just a dump off where the halfback took care of the rest. 20 yards is 20 yards. And I also should be clear, he's not some guy who only checks down. This guy can push the ball deep as well. I'm just saying, he uses check downs to his advantage, but he doesn't rely on check downs at all. Like on this one, it's going to be play action, and then they're going to have Eric Ebron run that route right there, which is great against play action. He's going to run past the linebackers. Hopefully the linebackers will move in. Because of the play action, Ebron could get open. And so after this ball is snapped, one thing you'll notice is that just in terms of Ebron's one-on-one -on -one matchup, he is totally winning it. He is going to get wide open here from that perspective. But the problem is there's three linebackers in front who all could knock a ball away if Brissett does try to throw it in that direction. Even if he throws it low, it could end up in interception, so it's not a perfect situation for Brissett. However, due to the play action, he actually has time to make this throw, so he's just going to be patient here. He's not going to panic and not going to try to make this throw too early. While I have talked about you don't want to hesitate, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't wait on something if you realize that it's going to have a better percentage of working if you wait as opposed to throwing it immediately. It's a timing thing. Sometimes it makes more sense to throw it earlier, sometimes it makes sense to wait, Brissett waits a little bit and then makes the throw, and Ebron was able to make a much easier catch, really just because of that little amount of patience that Brissett showed right there. He didn't panic, he waited, and then they were able to get the ball all the way into enemy territory past the 50. Whereas if he made that throw immediately, it would have been a tougher throw, and it probably would have only gone for 15 yards if he hit it. So just a smart play by Brissett there of understanding when he had to make that throw. That's the problem with some of these younger quarterbacks is they have to grow up in a hurry, you know? Brissett is now 26 years old, and this is really the first time he's getting some actual playing time from being a guy who's been in the league for a few years. The last time he was a starter for the Colts, he was only 24, and it's, just, it's kind of hard to be successful at that young of an age. You're going to make some mistakes, and for guys who aren't necessarily high draft picks, a lot of teams won't have the patience that they would have with a high draft pick. And for a lot of the guys that were lower draft picks, just teams won't have the patience for them as they will for guys who are higher round draft picks. There was also this throw I liked where what's going to happen is the Colts are going to have those two receivers run those two routes right there and it's actually going to be a designed rollout. So Brissett is going to run to the bottom half of the screen and then he'll be making a throw. And so after the ball is snapped, the one thing you will notice is that 2 I Hilton, I mean, he's pretty easily open right here. There's clearly some separation and this is a pretty easy throw for Brissett to make except for one problem. The designed rollout has pros and cons. The pro is that Brissett is now closer to the bottom half of the screen right now and can try to make a throw in a better angle. The con is now he's making a throw on the run, making it a much more difficult throw for him to make. So there are advantages, there are disadvantages, but if you have a guy like Brissett who you trust to make a throw on the run, well then maybe it is a good play call to dial up here, and that's why I think they dialed it up. Brissett is going to make a very good throw, Hilton makes a catch for a touchdown, so very good play, and it just kind of goes to show the faith they have in Jacoby Brissett to make that type of throw, you know? If you have a bad quarterback, usually you won't trust them to make those types of throws, but clearly Frank Wright knows, hey, I have to trust Brissett, otherwise we're not going to win football games, period. And fortunately for him, Brissett is a guy he can trust. So I do think that this sort of quarterback-head coach matchup is kind of a really good one. And also, just worth mentioning, Jacoby Brissett, a starting-level quarterback for only $15 million next year, sounds pretty nice for Indianapolis. That sounds like it's a pretty solid contract. Of course, it's only been three games. He could revert back down to being a below-average quarterback, but as of right now, it's kind of a steal. But one thing I really like about the Colts is they put Brissett in a position to succeed. Something I've complained about the Browns is I feel like they're not totally putting Baker in a position to succeed. Well, for Indianapolis, Brissett is definitely in a position to succeed. Like on this play, first things first, they're going to have one of their backs who's in the backfield right here just go out in motion. And since no Falcon follows him, this gives them an idea that it is going to be zone coverage. And not just zone coverage in general, but it gives them an idea it's going to be a cover 3 zone by the way that there's only one Atlanta Falcon CV who's deep. Typically, if it was a cover 2 or cover 4, there would be two Falcons who were deep at this point. It could definitely be a disguise and another Falcon could run deep, but it gives you an idea this is going to be cover 3 zone. And for Indianapolis, that's perfect because they're going to have first their number one receiver in the top half of the screen run that route right there. And the number two receiver will simply just run kind of behind him like that. 
And so obviously the idea is that the defensive back who's in charge of covering that zone on the top left-hand corner of the screen, he will then cover the first Colt, the second Colt will be able to get open and make a catch for a touchdown. And as you see after this ball is snapped, it's going to work out really well. I mean, first, that Falcon is definitely making sure he's covering the first receiver in the area. And also worth mentioning, the Falcon who's in charge of covering underneath is making sure that he has to cover the halfback who is in motion to the top half of the screen. So this now means that Brissett has a receiver he can hit who's going to get wide open. And for Brissett, he's not going to miss this opportunity. That's what you like to see. That's just good football. A well-executed play by all of the Colts receivers on that one. And then Brissett was able to just do his job, finish it off, and get the touchdown. That's putting your quarterback in a position to succeed, in my opinion. Really good job there, I thought, by Brissett and by that whole Colts offense and coaching staff as a whole. This Colts team is a good football team. I think a lot of us, I think fairly so, have some reservations just with Andrew Luck not being there, but Brissett has definitely filled his shoes pretty well. They've got an interesting matchup this Sunday against the Raiders, who I just don't even know what to think of the Raiders at this point. The way they have so many players who are just inconsistent, who will be great one week and then not great the other. So they're kind of a frustrating team to watch. But that will be an interesting test. And then after that, you have some really interesting tests. You got the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football. Then you have the Texans and then the Broncos, who should have a good defense, although I can't believe they still have yet to get a sack yet. So it'll be interesting to see how they do down the stretch and how Brissett does down the stretch. But at least in the early going, Brissett has definitely shown he can be effective.